Hello, um, my name is Simon Duffy. I'm the president of Citizen Network Cooperative and also one of the co-chairs of the SDS Network. So I'm going to talk to you briefly about uh, self-directed support, particularly focusing on Europe. I have some slides which I'll share with you. Um, so um, self-directed support network was first developed in 2015 at uh, the self-determination conference that um, the University of British Columbia hosted that year, one of the last large conferences on that topic globally. Uh, and we thought we needed to really start creating an ongoing network to drive forward progress on self-directed support. And so over the last few years, we've been working together. We've particularly built around some of the structures of the self-directed support network on the work of developing citizen network, but also using European funded projects to build the whole structure. We now have a global governance group that represents 15 countries and other countries are joining. And we have several national hubs, for the SDS network emerging. And uh, the SDS network has published just recently global standards for self-directed support. And I have the image of the, um, I was rather excited to have a, the Korean version of the standards. Um, but this is the English language version of the standards and you can download those and the easy read version of the standards um, following the link on this page or on the QR page. Uh, it's all available through the self-directed support website. I'm not going to talk about the standard specifically um, in this short talk. You'll also find other resources um, where we've tried to um, connect our work to some of the challenges that are going on around the world. So you can see here the European Roadmap for User-Centered Funding um, is a basically a proposal for how to reform self all the long-term care and support services across Europe using self-directed support and personal budgets as the basic framework for that and building this upon an assumption of human rights. And I think one of the things that's interesting about Europe, I think sometimes compared to uh, some of the other English speaking countries is that in Europe, human rights tend to have much more weight um, in policy making. The second paper here, self-directed support, if it is so good, then why is it so hard? Describes some of the um, progress that we've seen over the last, well, nearly 59 years of some form of self-directed support globally but also explores some of the kind of systemic challenges. And I'll talk about some of that. And the last paper here is a paper specifically on the Australian system of um, disability funding called the National Disability Insurance Scheme, which is an extraordinarily um, mixed bag of incredibly progressive, ambitious and well-funded transformations mixed with some really challenging systemic problems. And again, represents some of the the complexity of what we're dealing with here. Um, this is a map of all the countries that we think that there are some kind of system of self-directed support. Um, there's no country where you could really say self-directed support properly is universal, but there is some significant progress in all of these countries. But I'm going to focus on Europe and some of the changes that we've seen in Europe. The progress on self-directed support, I think it's fair to say, it's always been in the footsteps of the independent living movement. And that's the movement that I think has been led by people with primarily with physical disabilities. Started in 1965 in California, has been built um, not just around these things, but particularly if we're talking about support systems around personal assistance, direct payments and centres for independent living. The challenge, of course, is the model is both perhaps too rigid for other groups and also the focus does tend to be primarily on people with physical disabilities and not so inclusive of other groups, older people, people with intellectual disabilities, people with chronic illness um, and, and mental health problems. So we have this kind of problem of 
a, a kind of vanguard group doing really important work, setting the moral framework, but not necessarily uh, a movement that extends to all groups who are touched by similar issues. self directed support, I think, is fair to say in Europe, although it started much earlier, certainly in Canada in the 1970s, but in Europe, I think it, it really started in the early 2000s. It often starts with a focus on people with intellectual disabilities, but by design extends to all groups needing support. And it tends to focus on personal budgets, manage different kinds of ways of managing budgets, supported decision making, personalised support, not necessarily with the person having to employ their staff, but the staff having to be much more focused on the individual and the importance of flexible funding, so funding not having to just be spent on support staff. Over that period, we have seen some significant progress, but it is patchy and there are multiple forms of resistance. England was probably one of the places where we saw a lot of early progress, um, but England is also um, where we've seen some of the most severe cutbacks since 2010 to public services, following the kind of extreme right wing um, shift in the politics of the UK. And uh, that has made progress has been much slower since then. Scotland is an interesting place because its legislation has actually been very well defined around self-directed support. Um, although it faces some of the same economic challenges and some of the same kind of resistance to real transformation. Recently, Flanders, which is this, manages the Flemish speaking part of Belgium, converted its whole system over to personal budgets. And there are pilots around personal budgets in Ireland, Latvia, Austria, Spain, Finland, and other places. Why are we seeing resistance? Some countries like France and Germany in a European context, both very, very important, have got very well funded, very institutional models of support that, and people who will strongly advocate for protecting those systems. Uh, so we have all sorts of reasons why there is resistance to change in Europe as well. Um, and they vary. In Romania, self-direction, personal assistance is actually illegal. And uh, in Italy, there is a system, but nobody seems to know that that system exists. Broadly, we might say that we've got a system where institutionalization is still common advocacy is still very weak. So what the SDS network is trying to do is catalyze change through supporting a network for leaders, building on the values that really matter, trying to spread awareness of the evidence, the standards, the technology that supports self-direction, but also trying to build a sense of the wider context. I think the self-directed support in its broadest sense, it's not a panacea. It is, in a sense, an adaption to a service system um, that often fails people or certainly does not provide people with the support that enables them to be a full citizen, doesn't enable families to be strong and well-functioning, doesn't enable communities to work well, often is undermined by injustice at a much deeper level. So I picture these things as kind of upstream solutions that actually help us avoid institutional responses. So I think when we think about self-directed support, it's really important we see it in its wider context. I think it's really important we start to think about how socioeconomic rights and the structure of the communities in which we live, particularly the neighbourhoods in which we live, needs to change to enable people to be full citizens and to enable families to function well. I strongly encourage you to join the SDS network. It's free to join. And I wanted to just end by thanking our sponsors. Thank you very much.